Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. Today, I am going to be putting all of my bronzers head to head in a bracket tournament. This was 110% completely inspired by Julia Adams. She did this not too long ago with blushes and then more recently with lip balms. And I watched both of the videos. I absolutely adored the concept. I will link both of her videos down below if you wanna check it out. And I highly, highly recommend that you do. Within every category of makeup, there are multiple products that I really, really enjoy. And even for me, sometimes it's hard to fully figure out, okay, but what is my number one top, top favorite? So that's what we're gonna try and figure out today. And we are going to be narrowing it down to the last bronzer standing. Julia said the same thing, but this concept has so much potential and I would love to do this with different categories. So definitely let me know if you guys enjoy this and if you do, what other categories should I put in this bracket. I will be swatching uh, most of these products for you guys on my actual face so you guys can see what they look like. RIP my skin. So I really, really hope you guys are gonna enjoy. Don't forget to let me know all of your thoughts in the comments and hit the thumbs up if you do enjoy today's video and subscribe if you wanna see more videos like this from me and let's uh, jump right into it. So this is what my bracket looks like. I spent two hours putting it together. I did not take it lightly. I also tried to group um, the initial products together very thoughtfully. I kind of put products that were similar in one way or another head to head. I felt like that made it more interesting. So let's get started with the first two products, which are the Rare Beauty bronzer stick as well as the Makeup by Mario bronzer stick. I put these two guys head to head because they are both stick bronzers. The Makeup by Mario bronzer stick is a little bit more full on compared to the Rare Beauty. This is not a bronzer stick that I would use for like a no makeup makeup look or more of a natural makeup look. It's very pigmented, creamy, intense, and you really do get a lot of payoff with it. Whereas the Rare Beauty one I feel like is a little bit more versatile and that you can use it both on like those no makeup makeup days and those heavier makeup days when you wanna amp it up a little bit because it is buildable and you do still get a lot of oomph with it. They're both really great products and I use them both kind of equally. Again, so difficult to decide between the two, but I think because the Rare Beauty one has a little bit more versatility to it, I am going to make it the winner. This one is an interesting one. We have two of, I feel like the OG bronzers going head to head, Nars Laguna and Benefit Hula. Nars Laguna is really nostalgic for me. I mean, I used it so much in my teen years. My mom absolutely loved it. It's been around for such a long time. It's definitely an OG product. I definitely don't feel like this is the best bronzer out there. Over the years, especially as different formulas from different brands have come out, I just don't really reach for this that often. But when I do, I'm always pleased with the result. It's a good bronzer. It has a nice smooth formula, but it's not like ultra buttery, ultra creamy. It doesn't blow me out of the water. It's just a good cult classic. Now Benefit Hula, I actually do reach for still in my everyday routine, even though this has been in my collection forever. And I really like going towards Hula when I want to powder contour my face. I just feel like it's the perfect shade for my skin tone. It's quite neutral. It's not too warm, not too cool tone. And I specifically really like this for nose contour. So I think between these two, Hula wins for me because I just use it so much more. Next up, we've got two Lux bronzers going head to head. This is the Gucci powder bronzer and the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Bronzer. And this one that I have here is Radiant Bronze Light, although there's multiple different kinds, but I'm specifically talking about Radiant Bronze Light because that is the one I have in my collection and it's also my favorite from the collection. And right off the bat, if you were to compare the two, I would say the Hourglass one is definitely more of an interesting formula. It's not like every other bronzer on the market. And I would say it's just more worth it to pick up this guy over the Gucci bronzer. This is not a bad product, but it's really just a very simple product. I, I honestly would even compare it to something like Nars Laguna. What makes this bronzer more interesting really is the packaging. The packaging is gorgeous. I mean, it's Gucci. It looks nice on the vanity. The product itself works and I don't think you would be disappointed, but if you were going between the two, the Hourglass one is just a better buy because it has such a beautiful, beautiful formula. It's a very, very sheer and buildable powder. So when it applies to the skin, it applies much more like a veil of color rather than just like intense bronzer. When you touch it, it does not feel like a typical bronzer. It feels more like a setting powder. And the Radiant Bronze Light has the most beautiful glow to it. It's a glow without being shimmery or sparkly, and it just makes your skin look healthy. I also love this for mature and dry skin because it just doesn't look powdery on the face. My mom absolutely loves this powder. So between the two, no doubt, Hourglass wins. Ooh, 
Next we have the Battle of the Fenty. We have the Fenty Powder and the Fenty Cream. What I really love about the Fenty Bronzer range just as a whole, both the powder and the cream, is the shade range. They have probably one of the best shade ranges for bronzers. And if you're wondering what shades I use, I like Private Island in the Sunstalker Powder Bronzer and Butter Biscuit in the Cheeks Out cream bronzer. This powder bronzer is very much a middle of the road bronzer. It is a completely matte finish. It's very finely milled without being too powdery. So you're not going to get a lot of kickback, which is nice because when you apply it, it's easier not to over apply it that way. So it's a good all around, very reliable bronzer. Like I know what I'm going to get when I'm going to use this. The cream I really love, this melts into the skin so seamlessly and easily. It's a very lightweight cream as well. So it's not super greasy or heavy. This sits in the middle. It's not super dry where it, it's kind of difficult to apply. Apply, but it's also not super creamy where it will just slip right off It just is that perfect in between and it's just all around a really nice cream bronzer. So between these two 100% the Cream wins for me. Okay, next we're going between the iconic London Sheer Bronze and the Drunk Elephant Deep Bronzy. I was even debating of whether or not I should include the Drunk Elephant Deep Bronzy because it's not really a typical bronzer. It's more of a mix in product. So you basically just apply a couple drops of it to whatever product you want, whether that's your foundation or a skincare product. You could use it on its own as a bronzer. I actually do not like doing it, I don't feel like it works well that way at all. I find it kind of gets patchy and looks really orange. So I do recommend using it only as a mix-in product, but I know some people do and they enjoy it that way. So to each their own, but that is like the recommended usage for that. And so the reason why I paired it with the Iconic London Sheer Drops is because it kind of has like a similar consistency and you could honestly do a very similar um, thing with these drops. You can totally mix these in with your foundation and get that bronzier boost because it's such a sheer bronzer. So it's not going to overly tint your face. It's really just gonna add that little bit of sheer warmth to the skin. The sheer bronze is really meant for somebody who wants a very natural look. It is sheer and it really just gives you the lightest, lightest, lightest hint of warmth to the skin, but it looks really pretty and wears very nicely on bare skin. I think I'm gonna give it to the Drunk Elephant Deep Bronzy. And I love that it gives me that little bit of extra warmth without literally like changing the color of my foundation. And it's just a good product. So I'm gonna say that this one wins. Next, it's the battle of the two Danessa Myricks cream bronzers. We've got the Power Bronzer and the Bomb Contour. I would say that the Bomb Contour is more balmy, whereas the Power bronzer is creamier. So this one has a little bit more of like a heavier, creamier feeling to it, whereas this one really just feels like a lightweight bomb. The power bronzer does have more of a matte finish and the Bomb Contour, this is getting confusing, um, has a little bit more of like a sheen to it. I like the Power Bronzer, but I feel like it could sometimes actually get a little bit messy because it's so wet and creamy. I find that I'll sometimes accidentally over apply it or grab too much product. And the Bomb Contour kind of fixes those problems for me. It's way more lightweight, way more easy to work with. I find that it's much more mistake proof. I don't really have to be too careful when I do apply it. And it really, really just like melts into the skin so seamlessly. So this one, I would say definitely wins over the two. We have the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Bronzer and the Glowish Soft Radiance Bronzing Powder. The reason why I wanted to compare these two is because I do feel like the formulas are very similar. They are both very, very lightweight bronzers. The Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Bronzer is very reminiscent of the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Powder. If you are familiar with that powder, what makes that powder so great is that it has this barely there feel and finish to it. It is not powdery at all, and it kind of just applies exactly what it needs to apply, and that's what makes it so beautiful because it just never looks heavy. The Airbrush Bronzer has very similar qualities. It is a very, very, very finely milled, very lightweight bronzer when you touch it, Pigment definitely comes off, but it's not a highly pigmented bronzer at all. So this is definitely ideal if you want something that is very easy to control, but you are not going to get a super intense bronzer look right off the bat with this. You're gonna have to work a little bit harder to get it. When I first tried this, I actually really did not like this, but it was mainly because I was not using the right shade. This is the shade two medium. I was using the shade one fair, which was way too light for me. And because it's such a lightweight, barely there bronzer, it did not show up on my skin because it was just too light. And so I hated it. But then I realized it's not really the product's fault. It was more the shade. So when I got this shade, 
I then started to actually appreciate what this product was all about. And I do like this a lot. It definitely has a place in my routine. And I like the fact that I'm able to slap this on and it's always going to look blended and diffused on the skin. The glowish powder is very similar as well. It doesn't have a ton of payoff, but it has just the right amount of payoff. It's also very, very finely milled. It obviously looks very different though. This has kind of like a nice blend of, of colors in here. That's more of a visual thing though, because when you mix it all together, you do only get one single color, obviously. What I do like about this is that it does have a very, very, very soft and subtle sheen to it. It's not like a completely flat matte powder, but if I had to compare the two, I think I would go with the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Bronzer. Even though I really like the finish of the Glowish one, I just feel like this one does perform a little bit better and you also get double the amount of product. Okay, next we have the Makeup by Mario Soft Sculpt Bronzer and then the Elia bronzer. The reason why I'm comparing these two is because they are both very highly pigmented matte bronzers. And without a doubt, the Makeup by Mario wins over the Elia one. Even though I do really enjoy the Elia formula, the problem that I have with it is that it's overly powdery. And so very often I'll go in to apply it. And if I'm not careful, I'll get too much powder on my brush and then I'll just get a blotchy mess on my face. Whereas the Makeup by Mario one, even though it's very pigmented, it just is so much easier to apply and to control because it doesn't go everywhere when I, when I go in to apply it. And it's a much creamier product. So that wins. Okay, now it's time to move on to the other side. And I'm actually really excited about this next one because we have the New House Labs bronzer and then the Kosas bronzer. I wanted to put these two head to head because they are both bronzers that have a sheen to them. Um, the Kosas one definitely does have a more intense sheen. You can see it right in the pen. It just has that golden shift. Whereas the House Labs one just more so has a general sheen to the powder. There's no like golden flecks in it or anything like that. The Kosas bronzer, I have a bit of a love-hate relationship with it because this has more of like a golden fleck to it. Um, it can sometimes translate to be a little bit too intense, but then there are other times when I apply it just right where it gives the prettiest golden glow. I think it really does come down to where my skin tone is at because when I am a little bit more tan, that is when I tend to gravitate towards this a little bit more. The House Labs one is a glowy bronzer done perfectly. This is actually probably one of the newest bronzers in my collection and I've been reaching towards this the most as of late because it just gives the best effect to the skin. It is ultra, ultra creamy. When you touch this, it doesn't even feel like a powder. It feels like a powder cream hybrid. And that's what I was saying before, creamy bronzers are the best because you will not get any of that powder kickback. It's, they're gonna be really easy to control and they just apply in a very flattering way on the skin. And the sheen in this is just right. It's not over the top. It just gives you that healthy glow where, where it makes it so your skin just isn't flat matte. It's just a perfect product. So this one definitely wins for me. Next, we've got the Tom Ford Shade and Illuminate and the Patrick Ta She Sculpted Cream and Powder Duo. The only reason I put these two guys head to head is because they do have very similar packaging, um, but they aren't really totally similar. The Patrick Ta Duo has both a powder and a cream bronzer. And then the Tom Ford Duo has a cream highlighter and bronzer slash contour. I've had this product in my collection for a really long time and I've definitely grown to really appreciate it. Uh, there was a time though that I was slightly resentful of it because it's so pricey and I really only use half of this palette. I almost never touch this balmy highlighter. It's pretty much just like a clear highlighter. So it just gives a glow to the skin and it's pretty, but I just don't use it that often. So I spent all that money to just have this balmy contour bronzer over here, but that's really just a me problem. You guys don't really have to worry about that. This cream is really beautiful. It is very, very, very balmy and it just dissolves into the skin. Like it blends like nothing else. You can use a brush, a sponge, your fingers, and you're going to get a perfect blend with this product because it's just so easy to work with. So the formula of this really is great, but the Patrick Tao one I think is really special. What I really love so much about this little bronzer duo is the fact that you get both a powder and a cream. Now, whenever I talk about this product, I always say the exact same thing, so apologies in advance, but what makes this product so great is the fact that both of these colors, even though they're both bronzers, they're completely different shades, and so it's not redundant, so this palette can actually give you three different looks because you can use them separately or you can use them together, and when you use them together, 
you're kind of just more so adding dimension rather than just the same color in two different formulas. The powder is warmer and the cream has a cooler undertone. So this is a little bit nicer for sculpting. This is nice to warm up the skin. And again, I love using them separately or together and I get a complete bronzer look when I do use it together, which I just love. And then the formula on top of that is fantastic. The cream is a little bit more on the drier side, so very different compared to the Tom Ford one. And the powder is really nice and soft and not overly powdery and just is a good bronzer powder. So I think this one's obvious. The Patrick Ta one totally wins for me. Next we have uh, the battle of the clean beauty brands, Tower 28 and Say. Tower 28 Bronzino is another product that I have a little bit of a love-hate relationship with. It's one of the few cream bronzers that I've even ever seen that actually has a golden shimmer to it and a bit of like a golden shift as well. Most cream bronzers are just one color and this is one of the few that has some gold in it. So it's a little bit different. I definitely prefer the bronzers that are just one color. Sometimes I find that this looks really pretty and it definitely adds like this golden sheen to the skin that I really like, but then there's other times I find it almost looks just slightly too metallic and it will really emphasize texture. Creams in general will emphasize texture, especially really balmy ones. And this is really, really balmy and very wet. Plus it has that metallic sheen, so it will double <laughs> accentuate your texture. The only way that I really like to apply this is on top of an existing bronzer, whether that's a powder or another cream that's completely matte. If I wanna add just a little bit of that extra glow, if I'm feeling just like a little bit fancy and I wanna add it to my look, then that's how I'll use it. I don't normally use this on its own for those reasons. And I also don't find the Tower 28 uh, creams to be very long wearing because they are such a wet, 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 wet formula. The Say Sun Melt is very different. This has no golden sheen in it whatsoever. It's completely one color. It's also more of a matte cream bronzer, so it doesn't really have a crazy sheen when applied to the skin, but it's still very balmy and creamy, but it sets down way more compared to the Tower 28 one, so I do feel like this is way more long wearing. You also get a nice amount of product in here, and just overall, I just feel like for my preferences, this is, the winner. Okay, next we have the Fenty Matchsticks and the Milk Makeup Bronzer Stick. So this product, I actually recently had a change of heart about. Um, I did not like this for a very, very long time because this is a much drier cream formula. And because it is so dry, I always found it to be really difficult to work with, but it's all about kind of just learning how to use a product like this. And once you understand the right techniques, then it is actually a really nice product. And there are actually benefits to using drier creams. They'll just last a lot longer than, than creams that are really, really emollient. Like for example, the Tower 28 one. When using this, I just think it's really important to warm it up first. That way you're gonna get the, the smoothest application. And once it's applied correctly, it's a really nice product. It lasts really well. I love the shade that they come in as well. I use the shade Mocha, which is a beautiful bronzer shade for my skin tone, but like all other Fenty products, there's a million shades to choose from. And then the Milk Makeup Bronzer Stick, I completely stopped using, honestly. I wasn't even sure if I should include it in this lineup because I didn't want to include products that I, I didn't like, but I know it's a popular one, and so I wanted to still include it. And it, it is still a nice bronzer, but what I actually really didn't like about it was the smell. Um, it smells kind of like Play-Doh, but it is a very similar formula compared to the Fenty one. It's slightly creamier and not quite as dry, but it has that like thicker, creamier, more matte consistency. Overall, the Fenty one will win. Okay, next up we have the NARS Cream Bronzer. This is the Sunkissed Bronzing Cream, and this one is in the shade Casino. It smells incredible. And the Rose Ink Cream Bronzer. These two guys are pretty similar to one another. I, I'm trying to even think of like new ways to describe these products because a lot of them are very much the same, same, but different guys. The biggest difference though between the two is that the rose ink one I find applies more naturally to the skin because it's more of a bomb-like texture. Um, so it's a little bit more lightweight and blends uh, into a sheerer finish compared to the NARS cream, which is much creamier and actually much more pigmented. And so you get way more um, payoff and intensity with this one, but they both blend nicely. They both apply nicely. They are just slightly different formulas 
And I think between these two, I, I really do like them both, but I think the rose ink one is gonna win for me. Mayor Bronzer Stick and the Nude Sticks Bondi Bay. This was another one I wasn't 100% sure if I should include here because it's not totally fair because I actually do not like this product. Um, but again, I knew that you guys would be curious about it just in case you didn't know that I didn't like the product, so I still wanted to include it. It's a very, very balmy texture and it's meant to be natural looking and very sheer, but I find this to be too sheer. And once it's actually blended out, it almost doesn't even show up on the face. But what really um, sends this to the no pile for me is the fact that it's quite patchy. Even when blended out on top of foundation, underneath foundation, doesn't matter. I just find it always looks patchy. And so it just never works for me. So short and sweet but I don't like this. The Nude Six Bondi Bay is another product that I've completely changed my mind about. I used to be obsessed with it. I've gone through six and six of them. Now I just can't use it because I really, really don't like the color. The color is super orange. The formula though is really nice. I do really like all of the Nude Six creams. They're super creamy, very pigmented, very easy to blend and work with. So that's not really the problem. It's really just the color. So what I think I'm going to do, again, I'm making up my own rules here. I'm actually gonna get rid of both of them, which means that the next product automatically goes to the second round. Next up we have the Milk Bionic and then the Charlotte Tilbury Contour Wand. These are not really similar products, but I felt like they made sense together because they're both liquidy products. But like I said, completely different consistencies. The Charlotte Tilbury Contour Wand is much moussier. The Milk Bionic is a total like gel formula. The Milk Bionic is almost a more amped up version of the iconic London Sheer Bronze. It has like a very similar consistency, but it has way more payoff compared to the um, Iconic London. The consistency of this is really nice though. It does just very easily melt into the skin. The only thing I will say is sometimes I find this can get a little bit patchy. With those true gel formulas, I do find that that's actually often the issue. I don't know why that is. And then the Charlotte Tilbury Contour Wand, again, like every other Charlotte Tilbury product, it has been so, so, so hyped up. And it is a really beautiful, creamy, moussey contour. I really like the consistency of the Charlotte Tilbury contour wands, although I do feel like you need to be a little bit careful when applying them. If you apply too much, it will take you forever to blend it out and it can kind of start to spread and get everywhere. So that is something to be mindful of. And then on top of that, the packaging does kind of suck. Um, it tends to explode and go everywhere and it's just not ideal. But the product itself is a really nice contour product. So I do think that that is gonna be the winner. Then we have two of my favorite drugstore bronzers, the Physicians Formula Butter Bronzer and the e.l.f. Putty bronzer. The e.l.f. one is a cream, the Physicians Formula one is a powder, but the Physicians Formula Butter Bronzer can almost be a cream because it is such a beautiful and creamy consistency. The Physicians Formula Butter Bronzer has been around for a really long time and it's been very popular for a really long time for a good reason. The consistency of this powder is one of the best bronzer consistencies out there, whether it's from the drugstore or from Sephora, it's called the butter bronzer for a reason. Like it is smooth like butter. And it also smells really good. Very similar to the NARS bronzer actually. And then the e.l.f. putty bronzer is a really beautiful cream bronzer. I actually find it to be very similar to the Say cream bronzer. It has that same creamy matte but still somewhat sheer consistency to it. The drugstore really does not have a lot of cream bronzers out there. And I was just really happy when e.l.f. came out with one and they did it really well. It still continues to be one of my favorite bronzers from the drugstore. So this is actually really hard because I think both of these products are very, very good. But I actually think the e.l.f. one is gonna win, win this round. Last but not least for this round, we have the Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin Sunkissed, Sunkissed, Sunkissed Glow Bronzer. And then the Makeup by Mario Skin Enhancer. I don't even think I need to go through this round because I think if you guys are familiar with my channel, you know which one I'm going to choose and it's gonna be the makeup by Mario Skin Enhancer. Overall, that is just one of my favorite bronzers that's ever existed. There's really not a lot of similarities between the two. They were just the two bronzers that were left over after pairing everything together. So I did end up putting them together, but this is a really easy win for me also because I don't really like the Charlotte Tilbury cream bronzer. I actually find this cream bronzer to be chalky in the weirdest way and you wouldn't expect that description from a cream bronzer because a cream bronzer should just never be chalky. I find this to be such a strange consistency because it's not dry but it's waxy. That's really the best word that I can come up with to describe it. It just feels kind of slightly sticky and so I just don't find that it applies super smoothly and it kind of applies 
thickly <laughs> to the skin as well, just overall. Definitely not my favorite. The Makeup by Mario Skin Enhancer though, this isn't even really categorized as a bronzer. It's actually categorized as a complexion balm. It has this way of just looking like skin and it has some sheerness to it. And even though it's sheer, it still has impact. And that is so hard to find and so hard to find that balance because normally sheer bronzers are just sheer and they kind of barely show up. They give you like the slightest hint, but this has translucency to it. So you actually see your skin underneath, but it still gives you that, that pop and that warmth and it's perfectly balmy. So it just blends and melts into the skin with literally zero effort. This is another product where I am fine using a brush, a sponge or my fingers and I'm always gonna get a flawless look. It's just incredible. And so this definitely wins. Now it's finally time to go into the second round. And now that I've already described what each product does, this is going to go a little bit quicker as well. Moving back to the top, we have the Rare Beauty Cream Bronzer against the Benefit Hula Powder Bronzer. Oh damn, this is hard. The Rare Beauty Cream Bronzer is really good, but the Benefit Hula is an OG. And because it's been in my collection so consistently over the years, and it still continues to be one of my favorite contour powders because it just does what it needs to do perfectly, I think, I think it's gonna win, guys. Okay, next we have the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powder against the Fenty cream. I'm going to have to give this to the Hourglass Radiant Bronze because I feel like it just has that little extra oomph. It's a little bit more special, a little bit more unique. The formula of this powder is just so unlike most other bronzers and powders out there. It's so smooth. It's so finely milled. It gives you the most perfect, glowy, beautiful finish. And the Fenty cream is a great cream, but it doesn't quite have those unique properties to it. So I think that's why this one wins. Next, we have Drunk Elephant Deep Bronzy against the Danessa Myricks Balm Contour. The Deep Bronzy really does something so different compared to the Danessa Myricks Balm Contour. I almost feel like it's not fair to compare the two, but it's just it's just what ended up happening. Um, I do think, though, that the Deep Bronzy is going to win this one because I don't have anything else that I've tried that quite does the same thing and does it as well as the Deep Bronzy. Whereas I have other balmy contours that work really beautifully. And so that's why I feel like it wins. The, again, the uniqueness makes it come out on top. The Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush and the Makeup by Mario Bronzer. I think I'm actually gonna give it to the Makeup by Mario Powder Bronzer because when I think of like my perfect basic matte powder bronzer, that would be the one that I would go to. Ooh, this is getting so interesting. Moving on to the other side. Oh man, this is hard. The House Labs bronzer against the Patrick Ta bronzer duo. Ooh, these are like two of my favorite, 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 favorite products. Oh man, okay. I think I'm gonna have to give it to the Patrick Ta one, even though I really wanna give it to the House Labs one because that's like my most used bronzer right now. But the Patrick Ta one is just so great. I love the fact that you have both of those products in there. It just makes it so versatile. Oh, this is hard because the House Labs one is so good. I feel like that deserved to go up further in the rounds, but it, this is just how the cookie crumbles, man. Okay, next we have Say versus the Fenty Matchsticks. I think this one's easy. The Say one is gonna win for me. I like the Fenty Matchsticks, but it's a little bit too finicky and the Say one is just so easy to use and I love it for those like natural bronze days. So it wins for sure. Next one, I literally already have a winner because I disqualified the Merit Stick and the Nude Sticks. Bondi Bay. So the Rose Ink bronzer comes out on top over here. Okay, moving on to the triple bracket on the right hand side, we have the Charlotte Tilbury Contour, the Elf Putty Bronzer, and the Makeup by Mario Skin Enhancer. It's just unfortunate for the Elf Putty Bronzer and the Charlotte Tilbury Contour one that they had to be paired with the Makeup by Mario Skin Enhancer because obviously that had to be the winner. Let's see who makes it to the semifinals. First, we've got the Benefit Hula versus the Hourglass Radiant Bronze. And I think between these two, it's gonna have to be Hourglass Radiant Bronze for me because Benefit Hula is a great powder, but that Hourglass formula. Okay, now we have the Drunk Elephant Deep Bronzy versus the Makeup by Mario Powder Bronzer. I think in this round, I'm going to pick Makeup by Mario Powder Bronzer because like I said, it's just that quintessential perfect matte powder bronzer. And so it's gonna win. It's gonna win. The top here we have the Patrick Ta bronzer duo and the Say cream bronzer. It's gonna have to be the Patrick Ta. It's that versatility, man. 
It, it just kills it. Semi-finalists on the bottom right, we have the Rose and Cream Bronzer versus the Makeup by Mario Skin Enhancer. It's the Makeup by Mario Skin Enhancer for me. I don't even think I need to say why. <laughs> We're coming up to the final two that are gonna be going head to head. So on the left-hand side, we have the Hourglass Radiant Bronze Light versus the Makeup by Mario Bronzer. Oh my God. Wait, should I? Oh man. <sighs> This one's really hard because I keep going back and forth in my mind. Do I go with the bronzer that's that perfect matte basic bronzer or do I go with the perfect glowy bronzer formula? I think I'm gonna go with Hourglass, guys. Woo! There's just something in my heart that's telling me that the Hourglass one deserves it a little bit more. It's also been around a little bit longer, you know? Oh man, okay. We have the Patrick Ta uh, duo versus the Makeup and Mario Skin Enhancer. I'm so sorry, Patrick Ta duo. You know how much I love you, but the Makeup and Mario Skin Enhancer just has to win this round. I use it every single day. It looks good on top of full coverage foundation, on top of bare skin, on top of skin tints. It just is an all around, gorgeous product and so unique. We have the Hourglass Radiant Bronze Light versus the Makeup by Mario Skin Enhancer. And I guess I should have known this all along because I think the Makeup by Mario Skin Enhancer is the winner for me. It's amazing how at the beginning of this, I actually genuinely did not even know what would come out on top. But as I was going through everything, it's so clear and so obvious that obviously the Makeup by Mario Skin Enhancer was gonna be my winner today because it is by far just one of the best bronzing products I think I've ever discovered. It really just hits all the boxes for me when it comes to a bronzer. And I love that it's also not a product that you could find from every other brand. It's real, real good. So good that it, it won the bracket. <laughs> that was so much fun. I really hope that you guys enjoyed seeing this. Thank you again to Julia for inspiring me to do this video. And don't forget to let me know all of your thoughts on everything in the comments. Hit thumbs up button if you did enjoy and subscribe if you wanna see more videos like this. And let me know what bracket we should do next or what category we should tackle next. See you guys in the next one. Bye.